those that can we're going to open our our Bibles in the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 38 we're going to read from verse 1 onwards Isaiah 38 38 from verse on 1 onwards Amen. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, Remember now, Lord, O oh Lord, I pray how I was walking before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. Surely I will add to you, to your days, 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hands of the king of Assyria, and I will defend the city. Amen. The brethren may be seated. I read this story. It's a very well, well known story of the church in the church. It's a story. It's an experience of a servant of the Lord. Experience of a king. A very well known king in Israel. A nobleman. He had a kingdom that was very rich a kingdom that was uh, recognized in the region and this text also speaks of a moment that was very difficult in the life of Hezekiah he was ill and it was an illness that was very serious that would bring him to death And now he receives the presence of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah, he enters in the palace. And he goes to the place where the king is. And there he delivers a prophecy to this king. And it was not a prophecy that if we analyze, if we begin now to try to understand rationally it was not a prophecy that brought any human comfort to him no consolation much on the contrary it was a prophecy those were harsh words but those were words that brought an awakening to this king the prophet enters in the palace and said, King, there is a word from the Lord to you. Put your house in order because you shall die. You will not live. My brethren, it is interesting that at that moment in which the king hears those words, what is more interesting is the king's posture. He turned his face to the wall and there he begins to speak with God. He begins to pray to God. 
he could have done many different things. He could have ex uh, re demanded as a king with his authority because of the anointing that was upon him, because of the government that was on his hands. He could have uh, demanded uh, a war that was better from the prophet. He could have just spelled the prophet from the palace. He could have been asked to uh, kill the prophet. He could have done many things. He could have called his officials. He could have called his family, his wife, and complained. But that's not what he did. He tried to do something that only God understood. He, he did something that no one else understood. And the prophet, as soon as he, as he delivered the prophecy, he left. The prophets used to do that. They would go in the name of the Lord. They would deliver the word of God, the message of God, and then they would leave. If a man received the message or not, that's man's problem. But his mission, his role, was done with the Lord. The responsibility that God has placed upon the shoulders of the prophet when he delivers the message of the Lord, he hands the responsibility that was his into man's hand. Now, uh, that man's job now is to accept or not, because there is something called free will, which is man's right to accept or not the word of the Lord. It's man's right to make his own choices, to choose whatever he wants in his life and to do whatever he desires with his life. But many times, those choices done in a careless way, and um, in the heat of the anger, and the, the heat of the confusion, many times we choose, many times we choose things that will, are going to bring um, harm, a great harm to us, not only to us, but to those that are around us, especially our families, those that are closest to us, the wife, the husbands, and the children. And many times we see this uh, on our daily lives, because my brethren, the Lord, He always says what He has to say. God always speaks with man. God's relationship with man, He hasn't changed. God always gave warning to what he was going to do. Man was never uninformed. He may ignore it. He may reject it. He may try to cancel the, desire, the will of God in his life. But what is important that we understand is that God always wanted to have a relationship with man. God always sought man. That's why the prophet was there. Because King Hezekiah was living his life normally. Until the moment in which the prophecy came to his ears, until uh, the moment in the word of the Lord entered into his heart and entered his life, he was living his life normally. On, with his illness, governing, dressed up, uh, probably with uh, his royal robes, with everything there, sitting at his throne, living his life normally. But what he didn't know, because he had not yet stopped to think that was that he was dying. But when the prophet arrives, when the prophet comes, when the prophet goes there with the passage from God, at that moment he was awakened by God, in order to make um, take a posture that would be different. Because when he turned his face to the wall, when he turns his face to the wall, he didn't see anything else. He didn't see his position as a king. He didn't see the kingdom, the power that were in his hands. 
He didn't see any more anything that was related to his life. Nothing that would remove his fellowship with, with God. When he turns his face to the wall, he says, God, I'm here. I have nothing else. I'm completely dependent on you. My life is in your hands, God. I do not depend on anything. I'm here, dying. I don't depend on my family anymore. I don't depend on the government, the position that was given to me, of what I have, the men, the soldiers, they are there. I only have you, God. My brethren, when man takes this posture, the Lord is pleased with it. And it is something that happens every day when we enter into the house of the Lord. Because we know that there is upon us a judgment from God, which is the judgment to death, which is the, the judgment that brings men to die. Think because of sin, because of our lives, and because of what we are, there is a judgment of death upon man. And every day we count our days until we die. But when we enter into the house of the Lord, when we open our Bibles at home or wherever we are, when we speak with the Lord, when we come back to the prophetic side, when we accept to enter into in God's time and God's project, when we leave our own human time and we enter into the God's measure, God, He speaks with us. And we are there brought to understand what awaits us. Every time that we enter here and we plead for the blood of Jesus, Jesus, every time we, we are in the presence of the Lord and hear the voice of the Lord, we sing songs, we, we pray to the Lord, we understand one thing. We understand that we are dying. What am I going to do with my life? What is going to happen to my life tomorrow? Because the prophecy does that. The contact that we have with God when we read the Bible, when you are listening to the voice of God, you are woken to this. And he prays to the Lord. Lord, I will ask you that you remember now that I walked in your presence in truth and with a perfect heart. My brethren, when he turns his face to the wall, he there he begins to present to the Lord Nothing that was men's. He didn't tell God that he was a good king. He didn't tell God that he, that everything that he spoke to his people, the instruction that he gave, the judgments that he made. He didn't say anything that human conquers, conquests. He didn't speak about his biblical power or anything like that. He said, "Lord, remember that I always walked in truth." My brethren, this is what we need to present to the Lord. When man presents to God what he does, that he is walking in truth, and that he is in truth, he is nothing more or less. He's saying, he's saying that I accepted the sacrifice of Jesus' cross in the Calvary, and now I'm free. Now I'm walking Jesus. That's what the Word says that you will know the truth and the true truth will free you because we are in the presence of God when we accept the salvation in Jesus we are new creatures everything that we did our bad testimony our lives sins in our lives to remain in sin everything is left behind we're not going to stop sinning but the pleading to the blood of Jesus, the power that is in the blood of Jesus, make us repent from our sins. Make us confess our sins. And then we leave the practice of sin. 
sin always comes because there is this this inheritance that man receives but today when we accept that Jesus as your only savior we pray to the Lord and he places standing he raises us up because the weight of sin brings men down the weight of sin the pain of sin the suffering the wage of sin is death but when we present to the Lord the truth when we tell the Lord Lord I walk in truth uh, Lord I try to live my life as this new birth I, I am concerned about my testimony out there not only inside the church but out there with my co-workers with with those there my neighbors my relatives when I try to serve you Lord we're waiting for the Lord to place in our hands what we always need which is to have a word of salvation to those that are around us and we try to live a life in the presence of the Lord and he says more I did what was correct in your eyes man needs to to seek this to do the things that are right on God's sight a few men in the Bible when we speak, when we speak of, about David David was called to God's uh, heart and the Bible says that when well, the Lord looked uh, to a servant that had found out something that was different Gideon when he was th went there he began to um, harvest his uh, weed not a, a lagar the angel came to him and told him you're a um, worthy soldier because he had found something prof prophetic and we are living a life in the presence of the Lord trying to serve him trying to please him trying to walk according to God's eyes the Lord calls us a blessed and he cries bitterly because at that moment he understood his own life he understood his destiny he understood who he was even though he had everything even though everything everything that was on his hands everything that was man's everything in his life but he was nothing spiritually speaking if he didn't have the presence of the Lord and he cried bitterly my brethren the Lord tonight he wants us to leave this place aware of something if you want to uh, want to receive the blessing from God if you want to live a life in the presence of the Lord live a life of a good a testimony that is faithful to the Lord if you want to live a life counting your days towards eternity you need to turn your face to the wall and you see that when you do that when you seek the Lord when you forget all the things that are of this world and enter in God's time and you begin to speak with God and begin to tell Him who you are, what you need do you understand that you have about salvation when you express to Him everything that is prophetic everything that is spiritual you will see the glory of God and you will leave this place like Moses left the mount when he saw the glory of God and his face was shining isn't it? the face of Moses was shining when he saw the glory of God when he came down from the mount and this is my brethren what the Lord wants to do in this service the Lord wants to do exactly what he did with the king Zechariah before the prophet left the in the area of the palace before the the prophet reached uh, the gates of the palace the Lord told him go back tell another give another word to my servant tell him that I heard his prayers tell him that I saw his tears and that I will add 15 years more 15 years more to his life and that I will also I'll deliver him 
and his kingdom, everyone from the hand of the king of Assyria, this city, and I will defend this city. My brethren, when we do this, when we take a position in the presence of the Lord, when we take uh, a spiritual posture, when we take a posture of a uh, worthy servant of the Lord, a man that receives the word from the Lord, God adds to our lives an eternity. Not only 15 years, 20, 30, 50, no. The Lord adds eternity to our lives and you, begin, be, you become eternal. But it is interesting that you need to desire this. Do you want this? It's very easy. You can read the word of the Lord. You can hear the voice of the Lord. You, you can have an experience of having a dream, having a vision, and seeing God speaking to you, God giving you direction, giving to showing you the, the path, God asking you of a better testimony. God requires of you of a posture of a posture of a servant of God. You can even tell God, no, no, God, I'm okay the way I am. I don't need this. I don't want to be better. I don't want to seek more. Everything is fine. My life is great the way it is. Thanks to God. <laughs> they many times say that. But tonight the Lord wants you to stand up. The Lord tonight, He wants you to have this understanding that Zachariah had when the word of the Lord reached his heart when he was taken to to leave this moment that was such so difficult but gave him a great benefit and gave him a deliverance they brought him more life they brought to him more a blessing that he alone understood interesting that later on he says in another text he says so lovingly you embraced my soul after he had received the blessing, after he had received the cure, he expresses this to God. So lovingly, you embraced my soul. That's the expression of a redeemed soul. This is the expression of a soul that is going to live in heaven. It is when we understand this that only in God, when you hear the voice of God, when you accept the voice of God, when you understand the posture that you have to take, when you have a positioning, the right positioning with God, we leave this place saying, Lord, so lovingly you embraced my soul in this service. And tonight I leave this place praising your name even more. Lord, I leave this place closer to you. And this blessing continues whatever you go because of a thankful soul when the soul comes closer to God is seldomly it rejects the blessing of God that's why my brethren is the service is so important how important it is for us to be here because this is the place where God is speaking we have a very rushed day so many trials so many things happen we don't even have time sometimes to open the Bible and go through the page of the Bible. But no, this place, we are in this place we are brought to receive a blessing. This place is where you have the freedom to hear the voice of the Lord and to cry bitterly on God's feet and to confess your sins and to repent, right, with pain to your sins believing in the power of the blood of Jesus, asking God, deliver me, God. Help me to let go of the practice of sin. There is a difference. Those that sin and those that continue to practice sin. When we plead to the Lord, trust in the power of the blood of Jesus, we believe that God can deliver us from the practice of sin. Because the repentance does that. 
Repentance brings men to reject the practice of sin. And here we can leave this place closer to God with our lives transformed, with our faces filled with the grace of the Lord, filled with the glory of God. And we live like this until the day when Jesus comes. And with the knowledge of one thing, that we will die one day for this life, but we will be forever in the presence of the Lord. That's what, his soul, that's what his soul was rejoicing for this. And our soul also rejoiced because we have this assurance, this guarantee that we'll be eternally be on God's arms. May God bless us. We're going to have a song. And uh, as we speak with the Lord at this moment, if this word touched your heart, in the same way God is speaking, place your hearts in order organize your household in every aspect if you need to um, fix up your human life your you take care of your professional life if you need to take care of your sentimental life your physical life place it in the presence of the Lord and also if you spiritually you are ill spiritually if you need a blessing from the Lord place your house in order because you will die you will, not li you will not leave interesting isn't it you, interesting, he said, you will die and you're not going to leave. Because the servant of the Lord, he dies, and but he leaves. But those that are away from the Lord, he dies and he really dies. But we, we are not going, we are going to die, but we will live forever in the presence of the Lord. May God bless us. Let us sing this song.
glory to God. I invite everyone to stand up. We're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord. Lord, we praise your name for your real presence in this place. Lord, we glorify you. We have, you have been a God that is blesses because great things you have done among your people, among your church. Lord, we glorify you because the love of God is being great towards our lives. We praise the Lord because we love you. Because you are everything that is great in our lives. We praise the Lord because only you are worthy of all the honor, glory, and worship. Glorified be your name in the name of Jesus. Twenty two zero three. I remember when Jesus touched me. to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Lord to Jesus. The Lord he gave us a spiritual gift. It was seen throughout the service here in front of the pulpit. There was um, a tray with um, a silver tray and this tray had a liquid which was oil, it was filled with oil. And to the service, we were invited, each one of us, to go to this tray and to anoint our face with this oil. This is the invitation of the Lord. Why? 
because when we stand up and begin to walk towards this silver tray filled with oil, it means that you are understanding the project of God in your life. You're invited, you're guided by God to get up and walk towards this to this uh, tray. If you want to do it, amen. If you don't do, you don't uh, don't want to do. You can do it. It's your choice because the project of God will continue. But those there are answering the call of the Lord, and they're putting this oil, um, anointing their face with this oil. It's because the Holy Spirit is transforming hearts, and you will see the difference in your life, in your daily lives, your testimony out there. Because the tray of silver speaks of this salvation with Jesus. Silver speaks of redemption. The oil speaks of the Holy Spirit. So when man is understanding God's project of salvation in spirit, God transforms his walk. The Lord transforms his testimony, his life. His posture is different. But you need to want this. Do you want this blessing from God? Do you want this transformation? Do you want to uh, leave the practice of sin? Is this what you want? You want God to operate in your life, that you will be an instrument in God's hands? Do this by faith. Whatever you are at this moment, you can tell God, I want this blessing. I want the process of prophecy of God may change my life. And through the acceptance of this word, there may be a transformation of my understanding. But you need to want this. I want, I need to want this. Amen? And that's why God brought us here tonight. So that the word of God may live. And the word of the Lord may enter and penetrate in our hearts. That we go beyond the understanding. Beyond the flesh, what is human. And enter into our soul. And bring joy to our hearts. Amen. Let us close our eyes. Let us finish the service. And if you still need a prayer, we are here at your disposal to pray for you so that the project of God may be fulfilled completely in your life. Lord, we pray at this moment and ask, Lord, that your word may penetrate in, into the hearts and that we may absorb all your teaching all your instruction everything that has been for us a warning, an awakening and that we may come closer to you speak to each one that enter into your house tonight and that we may leave this place Lord with our salvation guaranteed and with our eternity guaranteed for the glory and honor of your name receive the service, our offering, and take us home in peace. And bless us so that in tomorrow we may also evangelize, preach your word, make invitations to those that need to hear a voice, and that we may have the service and the activities in the day tomorrow with the presence of your spirit. It's a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The brethren may be seated. We are here at your disposal to pray for you tomorrow at 1030. Our service Sunday school the subject is pain revelations as a subject that is very rich it's a wonderful message that we have received many revelations from God an understanding a deeper understanding about the book of revelations a book that uh, is uh, so spoken of but very has had very little understand but the Lord has given it uh, understanding a uh, great teaching we, the brother may come here at 10 30 in the morning and also at 7 30 at night we have a day of evangelist service 
Right. I wish a peace of the Lord to everyone. Uh, the Group B has has a meeting uh, after assistance. After assistance, the B group needs to go up to participate on, on the, a meeting. Peace of the Lord.